force goes this way, it's positive, right? Use your thumb to align with the positive direction of Z. And your four fingers will tell you what is the positive direction. So RAY will produce counterclockwise rotation with respect to the Z axis on the X, Y plane. So the first term is positive. RAY times what? Times the total length, because we're taking them all with respect to the point. So it's RAY times one. Right now, this little problem that we have here, because if you take the moments all at the center or at point B, all these forces will not be considered R B X R B Y R B Z. We won't be able to consider it, right? Which means what? Well, which means that if you take the moment at point B, you will never be able to find out reactions C components R B X R B Y R B Z. So let's not take the moment equilibrium at point A or point B because whatever you do, you lose one of them. But if you take any point rather than A or B, you can find out the values of B. So the moment equilibrium for the Z component, we're going to take it at the center of gravity. We're going to do this. Because if you do this, you can consider all three of them together. It doesn't matter for the X because whether you take in a G or A or B, the force will always pass through A, B, or G. But for other components, you want to take a moment equilibrium at point G. So we said at point G, and in that case, the distance is no longer one meter, but it's going to be 0.5 meters. And this will produce positive moment, take this point in the center and build up a Z prime here. This is a positive. Now what happens to the RBY? Is it positive or negative? It's negative. Because RBY going in this direction, it will produce negative moment. RBY is also 0.5. Times what? Times IZZ, which is 1.66 times alpha Z. And what's alpha Z? Alpha Z is a time derivative of Omega Z because Omega Z is 10, that's a constant. So this will give you zero. In other words, there's no angular acceleration in this problem. There's only one angular velocity, and there's no angle, and this angular velocity is a constant. Therefore, there's no angular acceleration in this problem in three different directions. Minus zero minus 1.66 times what? For these two, also zero. This becomes zero, this becomes zero. Now, be careful that this will not always be the case. What if I tell you that this omega is not 10, but omega is 10 times t? If I tell you that this omega is not just a constant, but a constant times some time coefficient, time variable t here, in that case, your angular acceleration will be 10 because the time derivative of angular velocity. Okay, so the case we have here is not always universal. It is not always the case in other type of problems. It's only true for this problem. So with this, we're gonna put this together. First of all, from here, you know the RAY and RBY should be the same. From here, we know RAY equals RBY, right? Now, let's do the repeat the uh, equilibrium in the x direction again. Uh, x direction is all zero, and what? Point B, what do we have? Now from here, RAZ equals what? Equals to just this quantity, five times 9.81 times point five, right? 
Now, once you have this relationship and also this value, what do we do? There's also force equilibrium. Then you will use the force equilibrium to find them. So step three, we keep the condition there. Then step three, we find the force equilibrium. Fx equals to m times ax. Fy equals m times ay. Fz equals m times az. Then you use this relationship. Now, in this problem, we have. Why do we need to use this another three? How many variables we have here? We have six variables. Remember, we have six unknowns. That's why we need six conditions. You cannot find out all six of them by using only three moment equilibrium. You need to use them all. Now, in this case, if the bar is spinning which is back to the z-axis, like this, and there's a weight here, is omega. Now, do you remember that we talk about normal and tangential components? Correct? So here, the linear acceleration at any point of consideration, suppose you consider the point of gravity right here. There's going to be two components you have to consider. One is the tangential component that's perpendicular. This is the tangential component, AT. Right? And what's a normal component? Remember, the positive direction of the normal component is always pointing to the center of rotation. So the normal component is pointing to here. Now, when you project these two directions to our x, y, z, what is AT? In what direction? At this moment, is in the y direction. Right? So AT is nothing but actually AY at this moment. So this value is this value here. So that's one. And how do you find out this value? What's the tangential component? Huh. Tangential component, the linear is what? Is alpha cross R. Remember, this is the tangential component. Is angular velocity, angular acceleration crossed with the distance. Now, there's no angular acceleration here, so this is zero. What about the uh, normal component? What's the direction of the normal component here? You project it to the x, y, z. What is that direction? It's not y, because we already use y. It's not z, because z is this direction. What's this? Remember, it's not x, but it's a negative x, because it points to the negative direction on the x-axis. So you have to subject whatever you calculate here with a negative sign. So remember here, your an is negative what? Actually here is, uh, correct, negative omega, square times r. Please do not forget about this negative sign. This is very, very important. Now, do we have the omega? Yes, the omega is 10. Therefore, this actually becomes in the distance by taking the moment equilibrium at the center of gravity is negative 10 squared times 25. So this is negative 50. That is the normal component right here which is AX. Put the thing back to here, and this zero goes back to AY, and there's no AZ. So from the force equilibrium in X direction, we have the following. We have RBX equals mass, which is 5 times negative ax, 
So that's minus 50. That's it. That's the force equilibrium. So from here, we will find RBX is actually negative 250 newtons.